lot of people have you're gonna hear this all over you know people talking about how to address blight you know what uh what the practices are going to be to address blight but um one of the things that i found is that addressing blight doesn't mean just going to tear down and condemning a property right or going to clean up a lot correct because because it's still there yeah you know what i'm saying even if you even if you tear it down you know i'm sure you live next to I live next to a blighted property, next yeah. to, next door to a blighted property before. I'm, you know, you you told me that you did too uh, as well. But if you got a if you got a, a actual house that's that's there and it's blighted, mm-hmm. you know, the windows shot, you got grass growing through the, the bottom floors. Yeah. If you tear it down, then what you got? You just got a, a vacant lot. Got vacant. So now you got an opportunity for people to come dump more trash on there, put right. vacant car, you know. Uh, cars that don't work and all that sitting there. So tearing them down or just leaving an open space, don't fix it. You know what I'm saying? Correct. It's like to truly fix the issue, you have to you have to replace it with something. Mm-hmm. And then when you replace the structure, you got to fill the structure. Right. So if we if we if we if we replace the 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 actual infill lot or we renovate the actual the actual home. Then we got to bring somebody in there to occupy the home as a homeowner. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of want to like, I kind of want to get your your perspective on like, what it, like what, what was like your feelings like living next door to uh, uh, an eyesore like yeah. that? You know what I'm saying? And like we weren't even like directly next door to it, but it was in the neighborhood. Right. So I was always passing by to my bike or riding or walking past it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think just living next to it, 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 it more or less... At first, it's a disappointment. It's yeah. a disappointment to I think any any of the common man who knows is the structure has potential, right. or, or the 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 lot or the property that the structure is on has potential to have something bigger and better. Um, so more or less than anything, I think living next to it, it was a uh, it was a it was a, a sense of hope mm-hmm. in one in one area, but then it was a sense of like distraught, like. Man, this is this this was once something nice, right. and now look at it. Right. And I think that's what a lot of people miss when we look at, at blight neighborhoods or just blight property in general. We forget this was once something, right? You know, so it can be something again. Right. Right. So how we replace the structure, how we occupy the structure, that's totally up to the people who want to take that initiative. Exactly. Exactly. And then it's like, man, you know, you got kids playing on the block. Yep. You know what I'm saying? It's like. That 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 structure, whatever it is, if it's a, a lot, if it's a you know an actual property, it, it 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 opens up opportunity for things that we don't want in our community. You know what I'm saying? It's like you know it's it's a, it's easy to it's easy to to sell dope out of, out of a vacant house. Easy. You know what I'm saying? It's easy for to to house prostitution out of a vacant house. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's easy to to do all things that we don't really want in the community, and right. that most people in the community don't want. Right. You know what I'm saying? So. Then on the vacant lots, I mean, it's easy to throw beer bottles on on a vacant lot. Easy. Trash, litter. Knowing you somebody's know not going to pick it up. Easy to go ahead and just put, you know, abandoned cars just sitting there. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. And if, and if and if we don't have enough people to actually care about the redevelopment of that particular that particular situation, then it just sit there for years. You know, some you might clean it up. You know, some people might clean it up, but. That's not that's not focusing on the, on the root of the issue. Correct. You know what I'm saying. I remember I remember the time in, in the neighborhood I grew up in, having a having a blighted property. It started off as a um, as an actual house. You know, as kids we used to go bust the windows. You know because it just sat there for years. You know you go throw rocks at them. Then you know then you'll have a, you know homeless people running in and out of there. And this is in the this is in the middle of the of the street. You know yeah. what I'm saying. It's like you got. Residents living all, living all around. Right. You know, I'm talking about you know working people, people going. People, it's it's not a uh, it wasn't a, a big crime infested area, but mm-hmm. it was a this this particular house was like a it w- it stuck out like a sore thumb, and it gave opportunity for a lot of things that most of the residents wasn't really used to. Correct. You know what I'm saying? People and th- at that particular time, people wasn't seeing you know people just hanging right there, you know, doing drugs or. Right. People coming in and out of the doors, you know, that's obviously look like they they prostitute. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, this particular this particular property afforded the opportunity for all of that. Correct. So then they tore it down, right? So now I had, so now it's just an infill lot. It's 
it's it's so obvious because again there's houses all around and they got this this lot right here that's just vacant just chilling and then people started parking their cars over there people started yeah. you know it started off people just parking cars there then the cars got broke down mm. and then the cars stayed there and then now they're just there for years and now they got grass growing around it right. so it's like this brings me to you know to my perspective on blight saying we got to do something totally different man and just condemning the property Correct. or cleaning up the or cleaning up the site yeah we have to actually for one first we got to get people invested in that part of the community wherever mm -hmm. wherever those wherever those blighted areas are, we got to get people invested in that part of the community and showing them like, no, this this community can be a great place and you want to own your home here. Correct. You want to buy, you want to live here, you want to own your home here. And then we got to transition that mm -hmm. property into into a structure that people want to want to habitat. Right. And not just as, and not just as renters, you know what I'm saying? We we want to bring in value of ownership, right. you know what I'm saying? We want to have that's that's what we have to bring into our community, value of ownership. You know, really, really, really owning your keys. Right. You know what I'm saying? And because that brings a totally different feeling. It brings sustainability. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It brings a totally different feeling, man. You do, you know, you do, you work on, you work, you help people with their credit. You help people get qualified. Right. For home ownership. Like, how, like, talk about how that feeling is when, when somebody finds out that, man. that they, <laughs> that, that they in position to go yeah. and, 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 and buy their house. You know man, what I'm saying? Man, that's a, that's a that's a wonderful feeling, man. I mean, and I've been in the business literally for like a month and a half now, and uh, just seeing people's reaction. I, I asked my first client. We just got my our first results back, mm -hmm. uh, and my first client ever. She uh, this closed name. She went from you know mid probably four fifties uh, to high five eighties within a month, uh, and we were able to get thirteen negative items permanently deleted from our credit report file. Uh, and that set her up in a position to where now she can even start being in the conversation yeah. of making those those ownership purchases on cars, houses, whatever the case may be. Yeah. Um. So that I think that feeling, just as an agent, you know, as somebody as as being responsible for somebody's financial literacy and somebody's ability to own these different type of properties or cars or whatever the case may have be. Um, that's just a it's a positive feeling, and it, I think it exuberates on everybody involved. Right. Uh, when people start to see that there's ways where we can start making these purchases and we can start turning these blight properties into beautiful properties and we can start changing that 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 name and changing you know what I'm saying changing the demographic of what's going on with these properties that's that's when you start seeing the smiles and you start seeing things turn around exactly you know yeah. and so you know I own a real estate firm right and one of our core values are progressing families progressing people and families Yes, you know, by transitioning, by transitioning long-term renters into into homeowners, and you know, I had a, I was on a phone call with a with a client the other day, and this client has been on Section Eight housing for years, right? Damn. And she has just, she has got to the point to where she can, we we taking her through the pre-approval process. She has gotten approved. She got approved for an amount, and she wasn't that excited about the amount, but we had to go through a lot of things, we had to get her taxes done. You know, we had to set up, we had to make sure her business was structured right. right. We had to do all those things to get her this approval. She's been in, she's been in South Baton Rouge community for years. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Been on housing, and now she's a, she's a, afforded the opportunity to go ahead and purchase a home for her family. But right. she's having a conversation that, you know what, I, I, I can remember hearing the stories from her parents, from her grandparents, of how this community used to be back in the 50s and 60s. Mm -hmm. And she's saying, well, I don't want to I don't want to leave. I don't want to go to Zachary. I don't want to go to Ascension Parish. Yeah. I want to purchase my home right here. So also, you know, I'm on the housing authority board. So because she did get approved for this amount, and she was like, man, you know, I, I, I want I, I really need, you know, more money to be able to get the type of home that I want. So we like, man, okay, so, you know, what can we do? So I called, I called my guy, you know, that's, uh, that's over that, that organization. He's like, man, Jay, they are soft seconds. They are soft second loans, money that she can get to add to the money that she already has. Correct. That, so that, that adds to her, that, that not only boosts the amount of, of money that she can get to purchase her home, mm -hmm. but then if she occupies this home for a certain amount of time, that money is forgiven. Right, but the but the but the point that I'm making, man, is that these things been out here. People just don't know about it. Mm. So it's our job to 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 not just 
to not just transform properties and not just put people in, in positions of home ownership, but to educate the people on Correct. what's out here that's going to be able to benefit you long term. You know, and that is that all of those things combined is how you transform a neighborhood. You know, I, I, I just can't. I, I, we got to stop looking at stuff surface level. Yeah. It's like people are looking at things on so many so much on surface level. Mm -hmm. And we got to stop that because it's, it's just a band aid. Right. You know, we can't, we can't, we can't, we can't band aid a pipe. We can't cover you it know? up and walk away. Right. So it's like we have to we got to address things at the root, you know, and when right. it comes to when it comes to blight. And community reform, those things go hand in hand. Blight education and community reform, they go hand in hand. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's like pieces to a puzzle. Most you need all, you need you need to address all of them. Most definitely. You know, so goes back to my point, man, you know, when it, when the experiences that I've had with Blight, the experiences that you've had, it's a lot it's it goes a lot deeper than just condemning properties and right. you know, cleaning up lots. Yeah, it's way deeper. It's way yeah. deeper, and it, I think the key, the key element in, in addressing blight is having a mindset of reconstruction. Exactly. Having a mindset exactly. of reconstruction because it, it was exactly. once constructed. Right. So how can we reconstruct it and make it better? Exactly. You know, that's the only way. So like you just said, go to the root. You know, R and R. I feel like go to the root and reconstruct from there on up. Yeah. When you go to when you go to the root of a plant, when you go to the, when you go to the flowers, when you go to the, the top flowers of a plant. You're really not seeing anything but the result. Mm -hmm. Same with these blight. You go to this property and you just go look at the building and you say, well, this can happen, this can happen. You're not seeing the result. You're not seeing what can come from that, mm -hmm. what has come from that. So you're just seeing what the what the outer what that outer presence is. And you go to that root, you start going way back into, okay, how did this get here? How can we get it from here? And where, where can we get the resources to put it how we want it to be put? That's when you start working from root to flower. Yeah. And a lot of times, I think in blight in these blight, blight situations, we work from flower to root. Right. And that and that's what we have to change. Right. I see the emails all the time. You know, uh, this property looking to get condemned, or this property getting taken off the condemnation list, or yep. you know, this this complaint about blight, or this, <laughs> you know, and it's like, I get it, you know, but we got we have to be we have to be way more proactive than reactive. Way more, way more proactive than reactive, and you know, I've been having this. It's, I feel like I've been having this conversation so much that, you know, our our city has thousands of blighted properties. I literally looked at a map the other day that 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 outlined and color coordinated properties that had uh, overgrown grass, properties that just had abandoned cars on them, hmm. properties that were just that were uh, that were still structurally there but were blighted. Yeah, I'm talking about thousands, man. In one city, thousands in a city, you know. Now this is the thing: our city already operates at a deficit, right? You know, we already operate at a point to where they're saying, "Okay, we don't, we we're, we don't, we're we're we at a deficit. We're not, we don't have money, right? Right? But we got thousands of properties, thousands of things that are income generators for our city. Essential could become very essential. You know what I'm saying? Right. But. We haven't looked at we haven't looked at that and what we can do to address you know blight ordinances that can help us yep. you know turn over these properties and transform the communities to make sure these properties are getting back into commerce to generate tax revenues for our city to where we can not operate at a deficit because we because the city the city loses money for for properties that that's blighted right you know and that's why when a property gets condemned you know the homeowner gets a fine because the city has to pay for that right. So if we, if we just, that's a small piece of the pie of course, uh, amongst all of any other issues that we have citywide. Blight is a, is a portion of it, a percentage of that. We got other things. We got crime. We got, you know, education. We have, you know, technology. We have all of these other things. And blight falls into that, which blight becomes a feeder for the things that I just said. Right. It becomes a feeder for crime. Correct. You know, it becomes, it's a, it's a result of lack of education. Correct. So... Why not go to the root? Right. I'm with you. You, you know, you have to. You have to. It, it's just, I feel like now, you have somebody like yourself, you know, who has the knowledge of how to attack. Uh, now it's, it's more or less of teaching teaching the community and informing the community. You can really attack these black neighborhoods and turn them into something 
totally different. Right. You know, you start and when you once people start realizing the more we can avoid the blight opportunities to even transpire, the quicker and the better it is for us to start generating that revenue that the city supposedly supposed to be right. revenue, you know, you know, supposed to be generating. Because there's no reason we should be operating in the state capital should be operating, you know, at a deficit right. for anything. Right. And let let alone essential things like properties. Yeah. You know, this is stuff that everyone needs, man. And I'm and I'm a witness to watching a lot of these buildings, you know, in the scenic area on, on in the north area of town, watching how a lot of these places that when I was young were big time businesses or big time car lots or whatever the case may have been. You look at them now; they're full of graffiti, yes. full of grass. Yeah. Uh, the the needs to be pressure washed. You know the, the little things, right. and it's the little things that we aren't attacking, man. So if you can go to the root, you literally can knock out all those little things in the gist of that. Exactly, and then it's the thing when we have when we have when we have transformed a multitude of properties in a neighborhood. To where now that now that it's not like they're they're renovated, we have gotten people uh, qualified to own be, to be homeowners in those properties. Correct. Now guess what they want to do? Oh, I'm, I'm a small business owner. I mm. want I want my office to be around the corner from my house. Mm. They got some commercial property over there. I want I want to buy. I want to I want to I want to try to buy that property. I want to lease that property. Right. Because I don't want to drive an hour, you know, out of out of out of my city limits mm. to go to my business. Correct. You know, that's the generational change too. With our with our generation, we we, we just we we not really with that. Nah. You, we want to we want to be in the same vicinity of yep. where everything is. Oh you yeah. Know, we want if we want to walk to work, we want to do that. If we want to ride our bike, we want to do that. Yep. You know, if we at work and we want to walk to the cafe down the street or to the restaurant, mm -hmm. we want to do that as well. Correct. So now because we have invested back into our community and we are we have we're owners here, we live here, we have. A vested interest hmm. into this community. Correct. Now we can transform the commercial properties too, because now we want to bring our businesses here. Most definitely. You know, so it, it it's it's definitely a cycle, man. Yeah. You know, it's definitely a cycle. Right. But again, it starts at the root. It starts at the root. It starts at the root. We gotta address the root of the issue. Yes. So.